Father, we testify to the fact that you are faithful, you are wonderful, you are gracious, you are the reigning king in all season of life, in all circumstances of life. Only you can do what no man can do. We thank you. Thank you because you are the one that was, that is, and that is to come. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Father, because you are our king, a reliable one at that. The one who is able to do exceeding, abundant, above all that we ask or even think of. Blessed, O Lord, be your holy name. This morning, we worship you. We return all the glory to you for the gift of life, for your sustaining grace, for your mercy, for your love. Father, be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Great Holy Spirit, we're here that you will complete what you have started in our lives today. Send your word to us again. The word of power, the word of strength, the word of encouragement, and the word of healing, the word of deliverance, the word of redemption. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit divine, draw us to the Father. Connect us to the Father's pleasure. Let the hearts of everyone that is here, online and on ground, be drawn to the Father this morning. Lord, I pray that you will meet everyone at the very point of their needs in the name of Jesus. It will be a word that will minister life to the situations and circumstances of men and women in the name of Jesus. That nobody will go the same. Heal us, teach us, empower us, open our eyes to the things we do not know and put the devil to shame. Great Holy Spirit, be free among us. Glorify Jesus today and establish the counsels of the Father. By the time we're through, or you are through with us this morning, I pray that we will have the fullest reason to glorify your holy name. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Now, can somebody give God a smile offering this morning? Amen. I want you to do it prophetically. I'm not trying to, not trying to motivate you. I'm just doing what the Holy Ghost asked me to do. Amen. Can somebody do that? Just give the Lord a smile offering. Just smile. Just smile. You know, some of you don't know how to smile. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Let smile be the easiest thing that comes to your mouth or that comes to your face. A frowning face will chase away some good things from you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Okay, we're going to do it again because I'm looking at some of you. You don't know how to do it. I see the Holy Ghost teaching you how to do it this morning. Okay? And you are going to smile. I see somebody's going to smile at what God is going to do in your life, at the testimony that you will give, no matter the issue, the current problems and challenges, brothers and sisters, you are going to smile. You will see the end of this trouble. You see the end of the challenge. And the Lord Je Jehovah Jireh will rise up in your life. Show. We show up for you in it all. In the name of Jesus. So, so who is smiling to Jesus this morning? Praise God. I think it's easier now. <laughs> Amen. Now they are not, you, won't, you won't cry again. You won't have any reason to shed tears. If you are going to shed tears at all, it will be tears of joy. Tears of come and see what the Lord has done. Tears of this is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight. In the name of Jesus. You receive that? That's the word of the Lord to somebody here today. Now, today I'm going to continue in the teaching I've started. Many of you are following the story and the journey every Sunday. 
as God reveals himself to us as Jehovah Jireh. Of course, you know, we took our text, the central text of this series from Psalm 20, verses 7 and 8, because that is the scripture that is making the difference between uh, the people that trust in chariots, that trust in horses, and those of us that choose to remember the name of the Lord our God. Now, that's, that scriptural verse is going to be relevant until eternity. Because as you move on through life, you will always see those two groups of people. Some that depend upon human power. Some that depend upon human strength, human solution, human connection. Their source of strength is rooted in human power, smartness, connection, and all that. You will always see those people. In every season of life as you go through life, those that believe that, well, I can do it by myself, I, can, I know people, I have money, I have connection, my family background is wonderful, I have cousins that are rich, I have powerful, powerful cousins in the military, you know, all about their life and manifestation. And their trust and confidence is put on what men can do for them or what they think they can do for themselves or the kind of money they have and the power, the influence, the connections that they have. You will always see such people. When they talk about possibilities in their life, it is centered around what men can do. When they talk about the things they can have, it is about what they can arrange for themselves. You will always meet such people in life. But the undoing of such people is that they will soon come to a stage of life when their human power can no longer help them. When money can no longer help them. You know there are problems that money cannot solve. There are problems that human connection cannot solve. Otherwise, rich people, powerful people, highly placed people will not be having problems. If money can solve every problem, Okay, if the knowledge of medicine can heal every sickness, no doctor will die. But you see, even doctor die of the sickness they specialize on. How many of you? How many of you have seen that? The sickness they specialize on, consultant, he dies of that same sickness, and there is nothing he can do about it. You know that is telling you that is a limitation to the power of man or anything rooted in human. That is a limitation. Don't belong to that group as you move on through life. The earlier you learn that lesson, the better for you. Is that okay? And then the second group of people are people who depend upon the Lord, who trust in the Lord, whose ultimate survival is in the Lord, who do not put their trust in what they can do for themselves, but who believes the word of God, who believes the power of God, who allow the Spirit of God to take over their life, who are guided by the instructions of the Holy Ghost, and who continue to believe that God can do even the impossible. That was why I was dancing this morning when Pastor was leading that, that song. Only you can do what no man can do. Before you sleep tonight, I want you to use that song to worship God and dance in your room alone for five minutes. And turn everything you believe you cannot do and turn it over to him. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? God likes it when we trust him. God likes it when we depend upon him. God likes him when you tell him, Lord, you are the only one I have. And I'm ready to follow you. And he knows you are serious about it. It takes personal action in your favor. So this second group that trust in the Lord that remember the name of the Lord, that situations of life will not make them to forget the Lord. Either good situations or bad situations, the Lord is at the center of their heart. The Bible says, we are risen and we stand upright. That's the group you should belong to. That was where God is bringing us from. And beloved, 
every time we keep referring to that, we keep referring to that, we keep referring to that. That was what made us to find out what exactly does it mean to remember the name of the Lord our God? It means to trust in him. And then we begin to look at the names of God. We see a revelation of God as El Shaddai. That's how God revealed himself to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And then we saw a revelation of God as Jehovah, the Lord, the self-sufficient one. You know, the covenant-keeping God, the covenant-cutting God. And that he revealed himself as Jehovah, the one who is able to do everything. He revealed himself like that to Moses. And then we see all through the Bible that this Jehovah God is appearing or manifesting in different forms. And we saw about seven clear ways that he manifests. And we started with the first one, which is what? Jehovah Jireh. I told you that Jehovah Jireh is essentially the God of provision. Beloved, you will need Jehovah Jireh because you will need provision. Yes or no? We are living in a world that materials are needed. Finances are needed. You are a spiritual person. But you need material things to survive in this world. How many of you agree with that? You need what? Material things. You need finances, isn't it? And then as you move on through life, needs are going to appear. Needs will appear. Financial needs, marital needs, all kinds of needs will appear. Especially when you are fulfilling God's purpose for your life. And Jehovah Jireh is the God of ways, the God of means, the God of divine supply, the God that is committed to meeting every legitimate need generated in your earthly pursuit and fulfillment of his purpose. Jehovah Jireh is the God that makes provision available before the need arises. He has the provision before you know the need. He has the provision before you meet the need. And the truth is this, beloved. He has not changed. Did you hear that? He has not changed. And he will never change. Whatever he did for Abraham on the Mount of Moriah, he can do it again for you. Whatever he did for the Israelites, in the wilderness for 40 years, he was responsible for their provision. He can do the same for you today. Whatever he did for the people of Samaria, when they were besieged by the armies of Syrians, he can do it for you today. He can do it for you tomorrow. He will do it for you every time. Beloved, I see the Holy Spirit connecting you to this Jehovah Jireh God. Because he is the God of financial and material miracles. Are you hearing me now? You will always need financial miracles. You will always need material miracles. No matter how spiritual you are, you will know you will need things to move on in life. Even if you go to the mountain and you fast for 40 days and 40 nights, you will soon discover that you need cloth. Yes or no? You need food. Yes or no? You need house. You need things. And are we going to get our things the same way the unbelievers are getting their things? That is the difference between you and them. So if you do not know how to get your need met, and the God of provision, you will connect to the devil. And the devil can take you out. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So we're not going to meet our need the same way the people of the world are meeting their need. But there is a Jehovah Jireh. He is the God that specializes in performing financial and material miracles for his people. And he performs financial and material miracle 
for his people based on his platform of mercy and faithfulness. Not essentially because the, the, you merit it, but because he's a merciful God and because he's a faithful God. And I tell you, beloved, financial and material miracles are not magical. They are divine imposition of the supernatural on the natural. And we need to explain this very well. In what form does Jehovah Jireh perform financial and material miracle for his people? Did you hear that? That's what we are dealing with. In what form? How does he meet the need of his people? How does it make finances and materials available for them? How does he help his people? How does he meet their need? And the Bible has shown us 12 different forms in which Jehovah Jireh performed financial and material miracles for his people. How many forms? 12. Somebody say 12 different forms. Talk to me. Say 12 different forms. And uh, how far have we gone? How many have we done? We've done nine. Number one, what is it? In the form of what? Debt cancellation. Debt will bring a weight, a yoke upon your life. But God knows how to cancel debt for his people. And free them from that body. Number two. In the form of supernatural release of your money or materials tied down by the enemy. When it comes to finances and material provision, you must know how to fight spiritual warfare. Because there are some of your things that the devil can tie down. The devil can instigate people not to release it. But that is Jehovah Jireh. If you cry to him, it will touch men. And it will move them to release what belongs to you. And whoever is holding what is yours will begin to release them. Number three, in the form of supernatural supply. Supernatural what? Supply. Bringing the things that were not there before by the exercise of his power. We saw what he did when Jesus spoke to Peter in Luke chapter 5 and said, let down your net for a, for, for a, for a card. You know, it's, and Peter said, Master, ah, I have toiled all the night oh, and I didn't catch anything. <laughs> but because you said so, otherwise I wouldn't have seen any reason to do it. You know I'm a professional fisherman. And fishes are easily caught during the night. So throughout the night I walk. I use my expertise. I use my experience. My professional capacity. But nothing. But because you said so. Did you hear what I say now? May you find an exception for the word of God. That you will bow to the word of God no matter the contrary situations around you. And you know he did that. And supernaturally, the word of God draws all the fish in that ocean that their boat was sinking. That is supernatural supply. And then number four, in the form of men coming under divine mandate to do things for you, God can touch men to do things for you. You shouldn't be the one begging about. You know, there is a formula I have used over the years. And it is working. Can I share it with you? Look at me, everybody. When something moves you, you move God in prayer. And God will move men in your favor. Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what I just said? Write it down. Don't forget it. 
it's working. I've used it severally. And God has remained faithful. When something moves you, you move God in prayer. And God will move men to walk in your favor. But the problem that people have today is when something moves them, they begin to move men themselves. You will be moving the wrong people. You will be seen as a beggar. People will look at you pathetically. And at the end of the day, you won't get the help that you need. But this is the method. Something moves you. You move God. How can you, a mortal person, move God? We move God in the place of prayer. Especially prayer of faith. Prayer that is based on what God has said. He moves God. And brethren, when God is moved, he will move anybody for you. Isn't that a more honorable way? Talk to me. Isn't that a more honorable way? That is a way that Jehovah Jireh performs financial and material miracles for his people. You know, God moved that widow to feed Elijah. Yes or no? He moved, him to, he moved her to feed Elijah. Number five, in the form of supernatural release of favor. You know, if I were you, after this series of teaching, I would take time to pray. Pray through this. In fact, this, this message must generate a lot of prayer points for you. If you are a prayerful person, you will never be short of prayer points when you listen to teachings like this. Don't be a person that after the message of the, in the church, you just close your book and forget about it. Prayer has a way of walking the spirit of the word into your spirit. Are you hearing me now? It's like when you are taking food, solid food, what do you drink? You drink water. Otherwise, it's not going to digest. That's exactly how it is. When you hear a message like this, you get back into private prayer retreats. Picking your notes and praying through. I'm praying for you that you will know the reality of favor. You will know the reality of favor. If you know the prayer I'm praying for you, you will not close your mouth. You will say amen. I said you will know the reality of favor. Favor is not natural. Favor is spiritual. Nobody naturally wants to do anything for you. It is God that moves men to do things for you. And how does he provoke men to do things for you? He gives you favor in their sight. Are you ready to say amen now? I pray for you that you will begin to know the reality of favor. Favor. All that some people have known all through their life is labor. 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 They are working. Hard working. Very good to work hard. But working hard without the force of favor, you will still have a hard life. Those that are doing the hardest job are not the richest men. Yes or no? Those that are doing the hardest job are not the richest men. It is favor that brings you into divine wealth. I'm praying for you that it will not just be your personal labor. It will be a divine favor. That is a limitation to where your personal labor can carry you in life. But there is no limitation to where divine favor can carry you. There is no limitation to where divine favor can carry you. Nehemiah enjoys supernatural favor in the presence of the king. Esther enjoys favor Daniel enjoyed favor. Moses enjoyed favor. The Bible said about Jesus that he was growing in wisdom, in stature. He was growing in favor with man and with God. I'm praying for you this morning that the factor of favor will come upon your life. Beloved, 
the factor of favor in financial and material miracle is orchestrated by Jehovah Jireh. It's Jehovah Jireh that makes people to be favorable to you. Number six, in the form of supernatural magnification of your effort. What the effort that you have, that appear little, God can magnify it. And you will look as if you are the one that knows how to do it. Hello, somebody. How many of you understand what I'm saying now? You will look like the one that knows how to do it. Because that's your little effort. The Lord magnify. That's Jehovah Jireh. Number seven. In the form of multiplication of resources. Five loaves of bread. Two small fishes to feed 5,000 men without counting women and children. And 12 baskets is left. God can still do the same today. And then it can be in the form of restoration of lost materials. And number nine, it can be in the form of healing of the demonic source of misfortune. Now, today, I'm taking three more. 10, 11, and 12. How does Jehovah Jireh perform financial and material miracles for his people? Number 10. In, in the form of increased sources of income. In the form of what? Increase sources of income. I want you to take note of this truth. It is the work of Jehovah Jireh to move you by his spirit to increase the sources of income in your life. That's how he provides for his people. Are you hearing me now? The provision of Jehovah Jireh is not magical. Look up everybody. You are not going to suddenly wake up and meet Naira under your pillow. Because most times people still deceive people. And there are many different corporates and pastors in town now deceiving people. And connecting people to demonic provision. Whatever you can see in the Bible, it can't happen. Hello? If you can't see the example in the Bible, God is not behind it. Because today now, life is going towards the, the season where people need a lot of provision. And provision is not available. How many of you have heard of recent government policy? They say they are going to give 12 million families 80,000 naira every month for six months as their own palliative for the uh, first subsidy that was removed. Hello? Are you current at all? That's what your government say they will do for you. As a result of the increase in fuel price, and everything that has increased more than 500%. Don't you think so? So people having money in the bank now are just wasting their time because by the time they, by, by the time they meet market realities, the money is already what? Useless. And then the government thought and sat down and thought that, well, the best thing to do, at least to solve your problem, and to, and to help Nigerians is to look at 12 million families and give them 8,000 naira every month for six months. Now, my question is, what happens after six months? Talk to me. What happened after six months? Now, number two, what is 8,000 naira? Not to a, a person, no, to a household. That is their language, a household. Was it thousand naira? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. And you know, people have been speaking against the policy because 
with our experience in Nigeria generally, it is another way that government officials are ready to steal again. Because for me, it's a very terrible policy. They said they are going to borrow 500 billion naira. You borrow money to, to give away to people. Is that a good economic policy? Anyway, I'm here to preach the gospel. <laughs> but sometimes when you are preaching the gospel, you must know what, is, what man can afford, what man can do, and compare it what God is presenting to you. So that you can listen very well and get that one of God. Because God has your interest in his heart. Most of the policies of government is not a product of the interest of the people. When some people are looking for a way to get some fun, they create a crazy policy that is not going to help people. Are you hearing me now? Now, if we are giving, if we are giving um, 500 billion to 12 million families to share 88,000, are they going to know those families? <laughs> Hello? Are, they going, are there only 12 million families in Nigeria? So how are they going to know those families? What is the criteria for selection of those families? How many would they look for in the states? In each state of the federation? So 500 billion, 12 million families. And then 70 billion to the National Assembly. How many are the National Assembly? That will share 70 billion. And how many are the 12 million families that we share 500 billion? You know that something is wrong somewhere. That's why we need to pray for our leaders. Sometimes they don't think like people that have brains. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Praise God. So I believe that it's a demonic attack against some of our leaders. Because for me, it's not natural. How can you think like that? And maybe there are other things they have not told us. And we continue to watch and pray that God will help them to get it right. Me, I'm praying for government too, that they will get it right. And I'm praying that they will get it right. But this one they have said, though, is they didn't get it right at all. May God change that policy. Did you hear what I say now? But let me tell you this. When God wants to help a man, Jehovah Jireh, one of the ways he does that is to increase your source of income. You are never going to wake up because many people in their desperation have, they say, I, I, just, I just feel like I wake up, I meet money under my pillow. If you wake up and meet bundles of money under your pillow, you are into talisman. Maybe they send it to you from India. And that will connect you to a cultic organization. And the devil will come back for his uh, harvest. Did you hear me now? Hello? The, the Bible, Jehovah Jireh, does not work like that. They don't spend naira in heaven. You can't just suddenly check, just receive an alert. And suddenly check your phone and you see money in there. And they say, from where I came from? From the angels. No, it's not going to happen. The God of the Bible does not do things like that. Although you may hear things like that, but that's not God. We're in the last days and we must know what God can do and what God will not do. And everything God will do, he has shown us in the Bible. Are you hearing me now? You are never going to just say, walk on the road. And if you see a bag of money on the road, that's not divine provision. If you take it, except you take it to police station, or you take it to radio station, where they can announce it and get it. If you take it and say divine provision, you are a thief. That's not Jehovah Jireh. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And every thief will go to hell. But this is how Jehovah Jireh performed financial and material miracle for his people in the form of increased sources of income. Through miraculous intervention, through wisdom, through revelation, through instructions, 
Jehovah Jireh can open other sources of income for you. Apart from your salary. That you never knew that you can earn money from. Did you hear what I say? Jehovah, that's the work of Jehovah Jireh. As I'm preaching, I'm teaching. If you are listening and you are following, it can drop an idea into your spirit. Hello? It can drop an idea into your spirit. It can give you instruction. It can give you wisdom. It can open your eyes to a business idea. It can open your eyes to things that nobody takes serious. That you yourself, you never believe that you can earn money from there. And then you begin to get money. Apart from your salary. Is somebody hearing me now? This is God's critical way of increasing your financial option and increasing your financial possibilities. That's Jehovah Jireh. In fact, some of us, we need to go to the Lord in prayer and fasting to give you anointed ideas. There are ideas in heaven that no man has, never, has ever known before. How many of you believe that? How many of you agree with me? There are ideas in heaven that no man has never known before. As you begin to be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, it drops an idea into your heart. And by the time you walk through that idea, your sources of income will begin to increase. It will widen your sources of income. So it's not only salary alone. Jehovah Jireh can come to you through anointed ideas, through divine instruction, through practical steps to start a business or to provide a service that will begin to bring in income apart from your salary. You will need sensitivity to the Holy Spirit to pick the anointed ideas that will break the limitation imposed on you through your salary. There are many ideas that probably has come to your spirit before now that you did not even count it to be anything. In fact, some people are too proud to prosper. Hello? When God, when the Holy Ghost brings an idea, he sees himself as a ah, hold me. How can I do that? No, 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 no. That's crazy. A hold me. Are you getting what I'm saying now? There are many, many ideas that has come. That the Holy Ghost will say, do it this way. What if you do this? 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 And that. And many times, we are not sensitive enough to pick it. And many times, we interpret it with our reason. So, a lot of people are tied down to salary alone. Listen to me. Listen and listen good. I have never seen any salary Anna go, I mean, break through into wealth. Did you hear what I just said? I've not seen one. That is a salary Anna, and it doesn't do any other thing except salary and is very wealthy. I've not seen one. If you have seen one, let me know. How many of you have seen one? Salary, none. I've not seen one. Because salary is not meant to make you wealthy. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? Those who design salary just want you to feed so that you won't die while doing their work. Okay, I told my wife this morning, I said, if they say, because many people are falling for this trick for many times. They say, well, you're, you're collecting 100,000 naira now. 
and uh, they say, well, we are increasing your salary to one million naira. You know, the shout of praise God will almost break the whole house. Yes or no? Of course, I know that there is no increment in salary that can bring it from 100,000 to 1 million at one time. But assuming it happens, assuming it happens, that this is July, isn't it? And then as of June, you collected 100,000. And then July, they say, okay, we'll start to give you 1 million, your salary. Now everybody will shout. They say, ah, yes. Everything will be okay for me and all that. But if you don't know what to do with the increment within three months, after three months, your, your complaint will be more than when you were collecting 100,000 naira. How many of you understand what I'm saying now? After three months, if you don't know what to do with the increment, your complaint will be more than when you were collecting 100,000. No matter how small a salary is, no matter how big a salary is, it is not meant to make you wealthy. That is the truth. Is that okay? Is that okay? And let me tell you, salary cannot meet all needs. Now, the, the truth is, the more your salary, the more your needs. The more your salary, the more your needs. The more your salary, the more... And we live in a society that if they are increasing salary of civil servant by one cobble, they will announce it for six months before they start to do it. <laughs> How many of you agree with me? Government will announce it for six months. They have not started, though. They will start to announce it. And then <laughs> the people in the market, everything will increase. <laughs> so by the time they now begin to implement it, there is no difference. Praise God. You know, one governor, I read about, I read in the paper this morning. He just came forward and said, from now, the minimum wage in my state will be 40,000. Calling 40,000 as if it is 40 million. It's 40,000. And then all civil servants will be eating one meal per day at the state secretariat. That's palliative. No, let me tell you, you better look for divine palliatives. <laughs> because some palliatives are mockery in terms of nature. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So I said, so people that are in the rural area will come to state secretariat to eat <laughs> one meal per day. The meal you don't know who is cooking it. The meal you don't know if there are demonic people that are using the water to cook and carry everybody's destiny into work. <laughs> and everybody will be going there to eat. You know, that's a solution that he brought up. And you can never blame him. But beloved, salary alone cannot meet your needs. That is why when I see people putting their confidence in life into their salary, I'm looking at a disappointment that is going to happen very soon. Did you hear what I say? I've seen people that love their work more than God because of the salary and they make it number one. You know, I don't need to tell you that you know salary can't solve your problems. Is somebody hearing me now? God can increase your sources of income. Apart from salary, that other sources can come up in your life. I remember many times I did a teaching. I said, set a financial goal for yourself that within so, so, so years, it may not happen at once, but within a period of maybe 10 years, maybe 15 years, you will have at least, what did I say? What did I say? At least four different sources of income. How many sources? At least four. 
that apart from your salary, you get other sources of income where money will be coming into you. That if you are serious with it and you cooperate with God, your salary may end up becoming your savings. Because many people is either they are doing the wrong work or they are underworking. A teacher, for example, the school will close by two. Now, between two and seven, what does he do extra? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? What does he what? Do extra. Or after two, he just gets to his house and, and the day is over. And sleep. That person can balance in this reality, this life. Especially if the person is married, have children, have various responsibilities. This is divine wisdom. Even the Garden of Eden, I'm going to read it to you now, was watered through a river that divided into four river heads. Even the Garden of Eden was watered through a river that divided itself into four. So four different roots were the sources of the watering that was coming into the Garden of Eden. That model, what is it teaching us? That you should begin to respond to the leading of the Holy Spirit in such a way that it's not only salary that brings income into your life. Is somebody hearing me now? That you begin to let the Holy Ghost lead you to what other things can I do apart from my salary? One young man came to me sometimes. He said he set up a business. He had a computer center in town and then photocopying and all that and you know a, a good business center where things can be done and then and he's making money. But he was teaching in a school, a private school. Are you hearing me now? He was teaching in a private school. He set up that business during, during one of the long holidays. And uh, he was making money. So we finished a service. It was here. And it was helping me to carry things down the road. And then he told me, Daddy, I want to tell you something. I said, what? He said, my, my business center is moving very well. It was during the long holiday that I set it. And I'm having good patronage. So I thought within myself that, well, I will resign the work I'm doing now. And face that one. That I, I know it will, I will get more money. I said, there you go now. You are going to make a very serious mistake. I said, when did you start that business? He said, during the last long holiday. And it's moving on. How are you running it now? He told me I was running it. Okay, are you coping with it? And he told me. And I said, why do you think you should leave your private teaching now? See, that private teaching is, is a fixed salary. At the end of every month, you will be getting something there. Are you hearing me now? This business center is not fixed. Sometimes you have customer. Sometimes you don't have customer. There is a season that is a peak season, rushing hours. And then money flows. And then you think, ah, that's how it's going to continue. Hello, somebody. I said, let me cancel you. Don't leave that job. Keep doing that work. Keep maintaining your business center. In fact, I said you should be thinking of, you should be thinking of the next one year or two years, how can I make it do the third one? And I reminded him, you know, I told you that at least four sources of income. Two months after that time, he came to me and said, Daddy, ah, God bless you for me. 
<laughs> it's God that says you should talk to me. <laughs> and he told me some other things that happened. <laughs> and he now said, what if he had left that job? What would have happened to him? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Amen. I'm praying for somebody that God will give you financial wisdom. Your goal must be to keep following God and developing yourself in such a way that it is not only one source of income that brings money into your life. Open to Genesis chapter 2. I hope somebody needs this teaching this morning. Is it helping anybody? Genesis chapter 2. Verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which compassed the whole land of Avila, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is delium and the onyx stone. Verse 13. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compassed the whole land of Ethiopia. Verse 14. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. That is which goeth towards the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Look up everybody. These rivers water the garden. These rivers water the garden. Four different river heads watering the garden. I'm praying that you will get to a place where you can say at least there are four different sources of income coming into your life. I'm not hearing your amen. amen. Salary alone, regardless of how much, cannot guarantee your financial and material prosperity. I told people that is always a business side of your career. That is always a business side of your prof profession. That is always a business side of whatever you are doing. Is somebody hearing me now? That is a business side of whatever you are doing. Go to the Holy Ghost. Let Him show you the business side of your career. You are a trader. What are you selling? What other things can you sell together with it that will bring in money? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So, that's the way Jehovah Jireh performed financial and material miracle for his people. He increased their sources of income. He increased their sources of income. He increased their what? Their sources of income. Their sources of income. So the Holy Spirit knows the kind of business that is good for you. Don't go and do business because you see some other people doing the same business. Some people are into copy, 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 copy. When they see somebody doing this, they also want to do the same thing. Find out from God which one should you do. Open your spirit to hear the voice of God. Let him drop words and instructions and ideas into your spirit. And as he drops it, follow it up. <clears throat> Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Follow it up. Follow it up. Follow it up. Number 11. Divine reduction of expenses. I'm praying somebody will begin to experience that miracle. Divine reduction of of expenses. That's another way Jehovah Jireh performed financial and material miracles for his people. It divinely reduces their expenses. It divinely reduces their what? Their expenses. Who told you that everything you need, that you have to buy it with your money? Hello, somebody. Who told you that everything you need, that you have to buy it with your money? Jehovah Jireh can divinely reduce your expenses. Let me tell you how. Jehovah Jireh can make the supply of heaven flowing into your life to be much more than the demands of life. I 
How many of you believe God can supply? Or let me put it this way. How many of you has experienced divine supply before? Let me see your hand. If you have ever experienced divine supply, that you can say, okay, this one oh, is God that supplied it for me. Good. How many of you believe that can happen for you continuously? That it's not going to be occasionally. How many of you believe that can happen for you continuously? Are you hearing me now? There is a flow of divine supply that comes into your life. As you develop yourself and develop your faith in the word of God and put the word of God in your mouth and you learn to manage the provisions of God correctly, you don't waste it. The flow of supply into your life will increase. When you begin to waste divine provision, that provision will stop. But when you are using it correctly, the flow of supply will begin to increase in your life until it is much more than the demand of life. How many of you agree that every day there is demand of life? How many of you spend money every day? Let me see your hand. You spend money every day. Every day you spend money. Amen. Good. Even the students spend money every day. Even though they don't work for it, their parents give them. You have to spend money every what? Every day. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> every day you spend money. So life is making demands every day. Depending on who you are. Now if you are still a single brother or a single sister, the demand of life in your direction may still be limited. But by the time you get married and you now have children, especially if you have them many, maybe you have about nine of them, God so much bless you. <laughs> he said the Bible says, blessed are them that their pouch is full of them. It's very good though. One brother told me, he said, ah, no, no, so he came out, he came out, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, you are blessed. How are you going to be blessed? <laughs> Praise God. But the director general agency to share a little director general, you are permanent secretary. Full-time housewife. Praise God. And then, you know, the man so quick, Billy, so he came up, come and resume. So long, what's up with when control of the assignment here? The assignment to populate the whole world. Is it only, you are the only person that God give it to? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? Praise God. So, now, when you begin to have children, and then your responsibility will begin to increase. Amen. 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 And your responsibility will keep increasing. Keep increasing. Keep it. You know, my daughter was talking to me about three days ago. She just sent a message to me. She said, Daddy, I want to talk to you. I want to pour my heart. Ah. When should I call? When I saw that message, I want to pour your heart. What, what's wrong with your heart? I said, call now. Even though I was, I was busy doing something, I, I can't afford to wait. I said, ah, ah. You know, somebody... She want to pour her heart. What's wrong with her? I said, call now. And then she called. And then she said, well, daddy, I know out of all the years I've spent in this school, you, I mean, this year alone, you have spent so much. You have, you know, I ask for money almost every time. Every time they give us this, I have to get it. I have to get that. And I always ask for money. And you always, he said, another one has come now. I said, don't worry, go straight to the point. <laughs> Praise God. I said, go straight to the point, don't worry. He said, I don't want, I don't want to appear as somebody that is always asking for money. I said, well, who else will you ask if you don't ask me? You don't have sugar daddy? You don't have uh, sugar uncle that will give you anything? Who else will you ask if you don't ask me? A final year law student, who else will you ask if you don't ask me? I said, go ahead and ask. 
whatever. And every time she asks, I don't give her what she wants. I give her even more than what she requested. Are you hearing me now? Because even what she's enjoying, my first, some pastor I've heard did not enjoy that. Because she is a lady and I have to give her special care so that she doesn't have any reason to look anywhere. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then she told me. Oh, I said, no worry. God will take care. I said, but those things you are asking for, you needed it. She said, yes. You needed it for your course. You needed it for that. And would you have asked another person? I said, don't worry. Don't feel anything. Is that what is in your heart that you want to pour to me? I said, no problem. Just if you need it, just let me know. Just make sure you know what you are doing. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So, what am I saying? Demands of life come every day. But there is a Jehovah child that can make the supply of heaven into your life to overtake the demands of life. How many of you understand that now? That the supply of heaven flowing into your life can be much, much more than the demands of life coming in every day. That is what Jehovah Jireh does for his people. So you will always have a margin of surplus. Ah, I pray that prayer for you today. You will begin to experience the margin of surplus. That the flow of divine supply into your life will be much more than the demands of life. And then you'll begin to have a margin of surplus. That is the meaning of no more kosi kosi, no more koto koto in the name of Jesus. For somebody here today, no more koto koto, no more kosi kosi. The flows of divine supply into your life will be more than the demands of life. In the name of Jesus. That's how God reduces expenses for you. Not only that, God can shut down every demonically added expenses in your life. Do you know the devil can target to can target your provision or your funding? He wants to drain your funding. And he's going to create expenses. How many of you know the devil can create expenses? We call it demonically added expenses. Expenses that is not from God. Expenses that is not generated naturally. Expenses that are added to your life demonically. That you now begin to service it. You now begin to service it. You now begin to service it. How does God reduce your expenses? He shut down such demonically added expenses. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are mysterious sickness and diseases that come upon people. Do you know that? Do you know? Do you know the money they use in treating sickness is more than the money they use in building houses? How many of you understand what I'm saying now? How many of you agree with me that the money they use in looking for children is more than the money they use in training those children? Those that are looking unto God for the fruit of the womb. And they are to go and do what they call what, what they call what they call it now. IVF. Do you know how much they do IVF? Do you know how much they do IVF now? We are talking of millions. And there is no guarantee that it will succeed at the first time. I've seen people that do it three times, four times, five times. And it didn't succeed. Are you hearing me now? I know that the money they use in looking for children is more than the money they can use in training those children. Anything that God can give you that the devil is withholding from you, today there shall be a release of them. You will not use money to look for the things that God can give you. Can you, do, can you say a better amen? You will no longer use money to look for what God can give you. How many of you is a child of God here? Raise up your hand. If, you are, if God is your father, you know. Can your father God give you good health? You will no longer use money to look for whatever God can give you. I see people having sickness. Different kind of mysterious sickness. Targeting their funds. Draining their funds. Somebody, somebody has kidney problem. 
and they say they have to do dialysis three times in a week. Do you know how much it is to do dialysis now? And it's got to do it three times in a week. And then money is going. Money is going. And it's not getting better. And dialysis is not the final solution, no. The final solution is to get a donor that will donate. And to get a donor that the blood will match. And after the surgery is done with millions of money, how to manage it post, post, post surgical operation, how to do the management. And all the ah, oh, Nishai song. That are sickness that can drain a whole family. That the people will borrow them, borrow them, give them, give them money. People will be tired of giving money. Those are demonically added expenses. God will rise up for you and shut down such demonically added expenses in the name of Jesus. You are trying to gather some money, gather some money. Some people have that kind of experience. Just trying to gather some money, gather some money, gather some money. He has been gathering that money in the last one year. And when it is time to now collect the money, he has the mind of, this is what I'm going to use the money for. I'm going to use it to do this, to do that. Critical things of his life. And by the time he just collected the money, that's the time the, children, the, the son will run in front of a moving vehicle. And then he will finish that money. Or that's the time they will call him from home. Your father is on danger list. Come home now. And then he will finish that money. And like the cycle continue. Those are demonically added expenses. Are you hearing me now? I've seen people that got their building up to the roofing stage. And then when he's pulling money together, pulling money together, and he got the money to do the roofing. That was when there was a terrible thunderstorm that collapsed the building. And he had to start all over again. Ah! Do you understand what I'm saying now? Was gathering some money, gathering some money. buy hello, my hello for glass, your hundred million. Oh Lord Jokuta, you shake it back, you love for glass, yeah. Money, Babeda, yeah. You get what I'm saying now? You know, when you see a problem that even if they sell you, it can, can, it can, it can solve the problem. You must know the devil is at work. Share understand by T Shuruba de to Jack Big Mata Egan could do but you are more wish no one day. And I'm praying for you today that the Lord will rise for you. We shut down every demonically added expenses. We shut it down. Ah, rise up on your feet. Put your hands on your head. I'm praying for you. We shut down. Every demonically added expenses of your life will shut it down in the name of Jesus. That is a prayer that we used to pray that the one you are not thinking will not destroy the one you are thinking about. That's a serious prayer. What you are not thinking about will not destroy what you are thinking about. In the name of Jesus. Any mysterious sickness will shut it down. No seed of death will, de will develop in your body. Every hidden assassin in the body of anybody, I take authority over them. In the name of Jesus. Every destructive agent in your life, the Lord will expose them. I want Kokorua General. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to take, begin to deal with them now. Your health will blossom. Your health will blossom. Your health will blossom. Your health will blossom. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Every attack from the pit of hell against your finances will take authority over them this morning. Amen. You are shielded. Amen. You are preserved. Amen. 
in the name of Jesus. You receive that? Sit down. Let me finish this teaching. Jehovah Jireh can bring a supernatural reduction of expenses of your life. And increase the quality of your life. It can reduce the expenses of your life and increase the quality of your life. That is Jehovah Jireh. Some people, they are, the cost of living life is increasing. And the quality of life is reducing. But Jehovah Jireh can reduce your cost and increase the quality of your life. How many of you believe that can happen for you? That Jehovah Jireh can reduce the cost of living life and increase the quality. That's what Jehovah Jireh can do. Divine reduction of expenses. That anointing is resting upon somebody. Divine reduction of expenses. 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 In the name of Jesus. So if you have not experienced it, you may not know that it, 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 it exists. Oh, beloved, it exists. Now, what other people are buying at high price, God can give you at a reduced price without stealing. Yes. Are you hearing me now? Without stealing. The last one before we pray this morning. The Jehovah Jireh can perform financial and material miracle for his people by making ways available for them, by making means available for them, by making rooms available for them. I want you to write down those three things. Making ways so that you are not stranded. That there will always be a way out. I pray for somebody as from today. There will always be a way out. 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 No matter the problem of life. No matter the difficulty. No matter the need. As from today. There will always be a way out. There will always be a way out. There will always be a way out. And then is the God of means. He can make means available for you. Means available for you. You will always have the means. Somebody will always have the means. When it is time to do it, the means will be available. You will always have the means. <laughs> you will always have the means. You will always have the means. And then he can make rooms available for you. God is making room for somebody. He will make room for you. He will make room for us. He's the God of ways. He's the God of means. And he's the God of rooms. He's the God of ways. He's the God of means. And is the God of rooms. There will always be way for you. You will always have the means. And there shall be room available for you. God made room for Isaac. In Genesis 26, verse 21 to 22. He made room for him. That's why, that was where we read as our text this morning. As our scriptural lesson this morning. He dug the first well. They took it from him. He dug another well. They took it from him. But when he dug another one, God made room for him. And I'll call it Rehoboth. Meaning, God has made room for us. Who is believing God to make room for you? God is going to make room for you. That's Jehovah Jireh. 
He opened the Red Sea for the Israelites to pass through. He opened that Red Sea for them to pass through. You say, what happened to the Egyptian? God, did he open the Red Sea for them? He closed the Red Sea against them. <laughs> you not, did you see the difference? He opened it for the Israelites and they passed through without any problem. <laughs> and then the Egyptians also want to get into that. And God closed it to great. The one that open can close. But I'm praying for you. It will open way for you. So the Israelites passed through in Exodus chapter 14, verse 16 to 22. They passed through. And then he opened the Jordan River also for them to pass through. God will open ways for you. Ah, a lot of shile kwa yo sile that is a reality to what I'm teaching you this morning. That is a reality to what I'm teaching you this morning. God has opened doors for people before. You are the next one that will open doors for. May you recognize the door when God opens it. May you use it for the right, the right thing when God opens it. God has opened doors for people before. And they can still open doors today. He will open doors for you. It will make a way where there seems to be no way. It will, it, will, it will make water to come out from the rock. And it can make rivers in desert. In the mighty name of Jesus. The, way, the same way he made room for Isaac, it will make room for you. Even in the most unlikely places. The same way he opened the Red Sea for the Israelites to pass through, it will open ways for you. The same way he opened the Jordan River for them to pass through, it will open doors for you. In the name of Jesus. Let me tell you two critical truths as we round up. Take note of this truth. Everything I shared, the 12 different ways by which the Obajire make financial and material miracles available, is because is these two truths are very critical. Number one, the financial and material miracles of Jehovah Jireh covers every area of your life. It covers every area of your life. Your physical, your material, resources, financial need of a human being. Once there is a need, you must go to Jehovah Jireh. He is your all in all. There is no need you can meet with your brain. Stop depending on your brain. Your brain can now work when God has spoken. You have extra help than your brain. You have physical need. Jehovah Jireh can meet it. You have spiritual need, Jehovah Jireh can meet it. You have financial need, Jehovah Jireh can meet it. Don't be the one that says, ah, this one does, it's, not a, it's not a matter of God. Every matter that has to do with need in your life is a matter of God. Jehovah Jireh is your all in all. Somebody say, Jehovah Jireh is my all in all. Say it again, it's my all in all. Say it again, it's my all in all. Develop the habit of telling God first and foremost. There are many things that people know about us that God didn't know about us. Many of us have that habit. Any small thing you have been talking to people, you have been talking to them, hey, come and see, hey, come and see, hey, come and see. And have you talked to God? No. Anything that happened, the first thing you're thinking is, who do I talk to? 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 That is who you should talk to now. That's Jehovah Jireh. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Is there are people that shouldn't even know anything about your life. But because you, you talk too much and you are not thinking that God is your all in all, so everything you talk to people and the people that shouldn't know anything about your life now begins to know things about your life. There are some of us that the, the secret of our life, you are supplying it yourself to your enemy. 
And the things they shouldn't know, they now know it. And when the enemy has your secret, he can deal with you. Is somebody hearing me now? Don't judge people by faces. Some people are smiling at you, but they are your critical enemy. Some people are laughing at you, but they are not happy with you. Form the habit of telling your need to the Father, Jehovah Jireh. Say it again, he's my all in all. Say it again, he's my all in all. Say it again, he's my all in all. I've developed, I'm still developing that quality as a man of God. Because those of us that are standing in the office of a pastor and teacher of the word, especially committed to preaching the truth, we must learn to know Jehovah Jireh as our all in all. Did you hear what I say now? We must learn to do that. We must learn to do that. Oh, are there needs in our life? Oh, yes. Needs will always come up. Needs will always come up. Needs will Only dead people don't have need. As long as we are alive, needs will come up. Don't talk to men first about your need. Don't let the first thought of who should I talk to her. Should I talk to Mr. So-and-so, Mr. so and mm -mm. Let the first thing be, I go to the Lord. Go to the Lord. Go to the Lord. Go to the Lord. Let him be your first point of call, your last point of call. If you go to the Lord and talk to him, the Lord will work on it. And he knows what to do to get you what you need. Is somebody hearing me now? So don't say this one. I don't need to pray for this one. I pray for everything. No. Me, I pray for everything. Me, I pray for everything. Because the financial and material miracles of Jehovah Jireh covers every word, areas of life. Every area of life. Every area of life. I pray for everything. Everything. I pray for everything. Don't look at it as a religious approach. It's a spiritual approach. You say, uh, can't you use your brain? My brain will come in after the voice of God has come forth. Did you hear me now? Using your brain primarily to organize your life will give you a limited life. And you are going to have many, many problems. But when you secure the voice of God, then you can now use your brain now. But the voice of God must take the lead. You won't suffer again. How many of you believe that the Bible says the young lions, they do lack and they suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. So any area of need, whatever you need, take it to Jehovah Jireh. That's why you should study the word of God more. You should develop your spirit more. You should develop your faith more. The Bible says, the just shall live by faith. Somebody say, by faith. Talk to me now. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Number two. Jehovah Jireh will, is committed to meeting our needs and destroy every financial and material hindrance to your miracle because he does not want you to be a servant of men and a slave of the devil. Jehovah Jireh is going to meet your need and is going to destroy every hindrance to our financial and material miracles because he does not want you to be a servant of men and a slave of the devil. It's good for you to be a child of God. It's very bad for you to be a servant of men. And it's very terrible and very a tragedy for you to be a slave of the devil. How many of you agree with me that in terms of material and finances, many people have become a slave of the devil? How many of you agree with me? Mm. And as the world is moving to an era of lack, 
and scarcity, many more people will become a slave of Satan. Just for them to meet their material and financial needs. How many of you understand what I'm sharing with you? Do you know many people are slaves of the devil now? Because of what to eat. Because of how to meet their needs. Some people, to buy a car, they will have to join an occultic group. What do you think the devil is using to deceive people? They say, join us. We will give you the good things of life. Yes or no? Yes or no? Do you know the devil came to Jesus? He showed him all the glories of the world and said, just bow down to me. I will hand it over to you. And Jesus said, get thee behind me, what? Satan. And many, many times, the devil is looking for who to, be, who to turn to a slave. He will give them money for a while and then he will require for their soul. Most people that are going in, go, getting occultic money, that is what happened to them. All those who are into Yahoo, Yahoo, Yahoo Plus, ritual stuff, it is a way to meet their needs that make them become a slave of Satan. I used to know a lady who were in the university together at some time. I was in, I think it was in part four that time. She was in part one. And she was telling me that if at the age of 25 she's not riding a very solid car that her toes will go for it. In fact, she was so desperate that she is ready to even trade away her uterus, her womb to get money. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? It's not somebody they told me. She, she, she told, she said it herself. And a lot of people are looking for, ah, Kati Lowo, ah, Kati Lowo, oh, 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 They go to the devil. Some will donate their wife. Some will donate their children. Some will donate their mothers. Some will donate their father. Just for them to make money. They arrested one, one, one man, one young man, recently. The international police arrested him. He was working in that company. He's a computer person. He was working in that company. And then he has a direct boss. That boss was sick. So he had to go and treat himself. So pending the time that the, uh, the boss will be in the hospital treating himself, he now showed this guy the code that the site of that company used to operate. At least to step in for him and make sure everything is okay. This guy got the code. He hacked into that site and he stole 87 million dollars. I'm not saying 87 million naira. <laughs> They are already a demon to, to, to even steal that kind of money. <laughs> I'm not talking of 87 million naira. That is like, what do you want to use that for? Is it pure water you want to buy? I mean, 87 million dollars. He stole it from his company where he's a staff. And he ran away. He imported. 30 luxurious cars in one day. 30. I'm not talking of one. 30 in one day. Are you hearing me now? He bought a property in Victoria Island to the tune of 450 million. And he used 1 billion to do the interior decoration of that property. Ah! But last week, they caught him. They arrested him. And he will spend some time in jail. Is that what you want? 
when you hear what people are willing to do at the expense of their life for them to eat and, and, and meet their needs, you will know the seriousness of Jehovah Jireh in your life. That's why many people have become a slave of Satan. Only God knows how many servants of God have become servants of Satan. Because of what they eat, what to eat. One charlatan was talking, was talking on Facebook and was saying that all pastors are four and nine. That he himself, he called himself pastor, even though he doesn't know God. I don't want to mention any name. Maybe some of you would have even seen it. He said he himself is that he is also a pastor, that he is also a forward nine. That for long, pastors have been, have been defrauding people. He said, for example, him, he was not talking about himself, that when he look around and he see that there is nothing to eat at home and everything, he will come to church and fabricate a vision that one boy wants to die. That I see his spirit. The spirit is hanging. And anyone that you don't want your children to die. Here, are 5,000, 10,000. And he says, stupid people, they will come out and give him the money. He's calling his members stupid people. He said they will now come out and give him the money because they don't want their children to die. He said he didn't see anything. No. I said he will now calculate the money together and go and buy Gary <laughs> and go and buy Ewa and go and buy. He said, that's how all of us, I say, I say, how I wish I could respond to this guy. God will raise up people in the church that can respond. Because that's our pastor, our need that's Are you hearing me now? Because I be in washing she or more jot here. Pastor to work in shaking you, he shall be. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Because we have crazy people who say they are pastors in these last days. Are you hearing me now? Praise God. So a lot of people have gotten to different things to look for money. Occultism is now very cheap because people are looking for money. Most of those societies you see in the market, yeah, the society for those who are selling chicken, society for those who are doing by, who are barbers, society for tailor, society for uh, butcher, Society for you know what I'm talking about. All these societies, many of them are cultic. People believe that you have to consult the devil to sell clothes. You have to consult the devil to, to sell cow. You have to consult the devil to sell cement. There was a particular time that some they were selling cement at so so so, so amount. And there was a man in this town that insisted that no, it's not up to that. This is how much I'm going to sell my own. And the group, the association gathered together and they threatened to kill him for lowering the price. Are you hearing me now? One guy, somebody used to, I mean, do, do some work for us before. He's not a member of our church, but anytime we need him to do some work, we'll call him, we'll pay him, he will render that service. And I keep telling him, get closer to God. Get closer to God. And one day, I, 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 he told me that, ah, he's, he's, this is not the only work he's doing. He's working as a government servant, and then he's doing some private work, and he now delve into killing cows. And I told him, get, you are going to be killing cows, for people, you have your joint where you kill cow. People will come and buy. When he started, he kills maybe one cow in a week. After some time, he became three cows in a week. And he's making the money. Making the money. And I told him, get closer to God. Get closer to God. Get closer to God. Feed your spirit. Feed your spirit. This business you are doing has a demonic foundation. Some people are doing the business. They have demonic linkages. Not, very much, not much time. They begin to threaten him. That his, his own meat is affordable well packaged and all that, and more people are coming to him. I said, get, get your spirit in, in shape. Get, when you come to church and hear the word of God and pray and get your spirit in shape, you are not doing it for your pastor. Is somebody hearing me now? You are doing it for yourself. After some time, he was sick. 
strangely. His kidney was getting rotten. His liver was getting rotten. His intestine was getting rotten. Everything inside was getting rotten. He was dying. At all the hospital, they couldn't see anything. Yet, everything was rotten. They don't know what happened to him. And then, he died. He just died like that. I want to parent her. So, you can imagine nothing parent her. Want to come back with you? Bata bata. They saw him as a spoiler of their business. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We live in a demonic world, and that's why, for me, I will not get anything from Satan. I'm satisfied with what God gives me. So God is going to rise for you as your Jehovah Jireh because he doesn't want you to be a servant of men. And he doesn't want you to be a what? A slave of the devil. Many, many people have become servant of men. Servant of men. Because of what to eat. Only God knows how many women, even married women in these last days that are sleeping around because of what to eat. Do you know most men won't give you anything until they sleep with you? How many of you understand what I'm saying now? Because of what to eat. But God is going to rise for you. God doesn't want you to be a servant of man. And God does not want you to be a slave of the devil. I've learned that lesson for a long time. Especially the kind of calling that God gave me. That we must open the whole of our mouth to say the truth. And I know that people don't like the truth. So if I'm going to survive, I must know Jehovah Jireh. Is somebody hearing me now? I told a young man, I said, you must learn to develop your faith. He just got into ministry. He's a young pastor. I said, with this kind of message that God has given you, if you don't know God as your source, men will change your message. Because only God knows how many pastors have negotiated their ministry with men because of what to give. For me, what God can't do, let it stay. Did you hear what I said? Oh, you didn't hear me. If God can't do it, let it what? Let this stay. I won't become a, a servant of men and I will not become a slave of the devil. What of you? But let me tell you the good news. With God, with God, with God, you are not talking to me. <laughs> with God, all things are possible. There is nothing God cannot do. The Bible says, they that know they are God shall be strong and they will do exploit. Beloved, haste to know Jehovah Jireh. Are you blessed today? Let's rise up on our feet. I want you to tell God, I will not be a servant of man. I will not be a slave of the devil. I will be a child of God. That's our decision. I will not be a servant of man. I will not be a slave of the devil. There are many of us, your journey is still far. You need to know Jehovah Jireh. Young, young people. Some of you do, do still have responsible parents. Father and mother that are paying your bills and all that and, and, and then you, you don't, you better start to know Jehovah Jireh now. Are you hearing me now? Your father will not die, your mother will not die, but they will not always be there for you all the time. So you must know Jehovah Jireh now to meet your need, the God that can meet your need. Some of us have good husband that care for you. You better know Jehovah Jireh now. Because you will not be there all the time. Okay? Some of you don't have good husband. Okay? Let Jehovah Jireh be your husband. He can take care of you, can help you, can, can bless you. Is somebody hearing me now? When you know how to trust Jehovah Jireh, you will never be a servant of man and you will never be a slave of the devil. I want you to take that decision this morning. I choose to trust Jehovah Jireh. I will not be a servant of man. I will not be a slave of the devil. I will not be a slave of the devil. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots. I will trust. I will remember the name of the Lord my God. 
they are falling. But I am risen and I stand upright. Let's talk to the Lord.